YouTube. What's going on? It's Mesa Sean back at it with some Destiny 2. All right, folks, we have some more Destiny 2 Forsaken news to go over in this video. And of course, it is coming from Game Informer. So we're going to clarify a number of things from the main August issue of Game Informer. But then also there was a really cool video, which I'm going to link in the description, called 113 Rapid Fire Questions About Destiny 2 Forsaken. Now, no, I'm not going to go over all 113 questions, but I'm going to go over some things that I think are pretty important. Let's get into it. So when Scott Taylor addresses the new destinations, first off he says we're going to go to the prison. Now I'm assuming that's going to be just for the campaign because we are going down into the prison of elders. Uh, he also says we have the Tangled Shore. But then when he says we have the Dreaming City, we have subsets of the Dreaming City. And remember, the Dreaming City will be evolving over time. There's going to be certain areas that right away we can't get into or are not powerful enough. Now Scott also confirms that modifications with Forsaken are getting a revamp and they will no longer give us a plus five power, hence why the new power cap is 600 and not 605. If you want to know more about mods, I covered it in last night's video, link in the description. Now, they do mention the topic of exotics, and they said about 10 to 15 new exotics, and the interviewer was trying to clarify, is that 10 to 15 new exotic weapons? And they said, yeah, 10 to 15 sounds about right, and also some really cool armor. So I hope, and let me know how much you want in the comment section, more exotics, more better. That's a dumb joke. Yeah, I want to see a lot of exotics, so hopefully 15 exotics exotic weapons and a plethora of exotic armor pieces. So the topic of what is the soft cap comes up and they are still working on it. But guys, remember I covered in yesterday's video that some of the activities will be taking place on the other destinations. I'll probably do a video on how to prepare for Forsaken coming sometime this summer, but I'll tell you right now, I am hoarding all of my destination tokens and of course, weapon parts. We know that random rolls are coming back and I guarantee you Banshee is gonna be a great source to try to get some god roll weapons. But uh, when Warmine hit, I used most of the vendor destinations, uh, Devrim K, Failsafe and all of them to get me pretty high in power level and then just use the weekly milestones to get me to 385. But remember, we're going to get four day weekly resets, not just seven day weekly resets. Every four days, some sort of milestones will be changed up to give us powerful gear. Scott Taylor also confirmed that they will be adding strikes to all of the maps within Destiny 2. We were kind of reading into some of his comments in the main Game Informer article, but no, he says in his interview that they're going to add all the strikes to the various destinations. So if you see a strike you want to play, you can just just go to that destination, fire up that strike. They also just reconfirmed that there will be no other paid content for the rest of the year. So if you buy Destiny 2 Forsaken, then you get the annual pass. You will get Black Armory during the winter of 2018, Joker's Wild in the spring of 2019, and Penumbra in the summer of 2019. So with Destiny 2 Forsaken, we are getting a new raid, and that's going to take place on the Dreaming City. Uh, they did confirm that the Leviathan will no longer be relevant in Forsaken. Uh, they're going to go the route for the other content expansions with the annual pass that we will be getting raid lairs. Now, let me just stop for a second and chime in here. So, um, I like the raid lairs so far. I think they're interesting. They're fun. I do think they're a little short, and I would prefer if we had full-blown raids for those other expansions. Let me know in the comment sections what you would like. Would you like more raids, or would you, or are you fine with the raid lairs? I think the raid lairs can be just as good as a full-blown raid if they just made them a little bit longer and maybe threw in maybe one or two more encounters. One question came up regarding guided games, but they didn't really answer, but they did talk about that they want to try to keep fire teams together and he brought up the examples of strikes and crucible because right now when you play a strike or crucible you finish the strike of the match and then you're off and you're matched up with the new group uh that's going to be really cool if they let you run it back in the crucible i remember so many times in destiny one you have a close game and you desperately want to run it back well we haven't been able to do that within destiny 2. now one question that scott taylor quickly shut down was gallahorn and he said no let me know in the comment section, what exotics do you want to see come back from Destiny 1? I know Christopher Barrett said in a previous interview, some will be coming back, but they really want to focus on making some new and unique ones. I know for myself, I want to see Hawk Moon, I want to see Thorn, and I want to see Last Word. I would say Red Death, but Crimson is kind of like Red Death. Maybe if it's even, you know what, it's better than Red Death. Now, that was all the new stuff from that particular interview, but I encourage you to watch it. It's a funny one, too. Let's go through a laundry list of things that I did not cover from the August issue of Game Informer. And also, there's a really nice Reddit post that has everything laundry listed. So we're going to go through some stuff that I have not covered yet. Now, the Scorn is the new enemy type, and they're not just going to be on the Tangled Shore or the Dreaming City. It says here, they're going to be everywhere. So these enemies 
enemies are more spread out and can be in random world locations, strikes in the middle of a gambit match, or high level lost sectors on older destinations. Now in the main story campaign, it's not going to be linear until we kill all of the eight barons. So we can kind of progress as we want, but they did mention in here that there might be certain parts of the campaign that we are just simply not powerful enough yet. And they said in the article that the barons are very reminiscent of strike boss encounters, demanding distinct strategies to match their abilities. They mentioned one of the new public events, and this one is called the Cryo Cell Escape. And this is where a pod is gonna crash down and then enemies are gonna try to retrieve their captive leader. After a few waves, the pod will open up and then we're gonna fight the leader that was inside that pod. They also mention about Lost Sectors in the Tangled Shore. And let me read you this one, this one's kind of funny. Lost Sectors in the Tangled Shore are more nuanced than before. One contains a fallen black market fighting ring and a chance to learn about the fallen's bizarre take on a dance club. Read into that, folks. Now they really are encouraging everyone to do the raid. So it says here, there are story threads that you'll learn towards the end of the campaign that are only fully paid off once you've actually beaten the raid. Now the raid is going to take place in the Dreaming City and the Dreaming City is also going to be a host for all the end game content. But we'll have to go on a quest after the campaign to actually unlock the Dreaming City. Now the Dreaming City is going to be on what's called a three week cycle, meaning it's going to change from week to week over the course of three weeks. They don't go into any more details than that other than that, Petrovenge, she's the vendor and she's going to be guiding us through the Dreaming City and she also is going to be moving around during that three week rotation. Now also there's another new public event that's kind of like a tower defense style and that's going to be called Rift Generator. You power up an awoken attack pillar and you're going to hold off the scorn invasion. Now it looks like we're getting what's kind of a cross between Archon's Forge, Court of Oryx and Escalation Protocol. It says here, loot caches provide offerings that we're going to take to the blind well. In that little teaser clip here, we just see a quick thing where it kind of, well, it looks like a cross between Court of Oryx, Archon's Forge, and Escalation Protocol. Now it also says for one of these events, it says an entire area gets shrouded in taken gas, except for the areas that you're allowed to fight. As you work your way around, you get more space to fight, and then you're going to get a boss fight at the end. Now in the Dreaming City, there's going to be different realms. So it says here, around the Dreaming City, dropped flasks will allow players to briefly glimpse into the Ascendant Realm to face special challenges or travel along platforms or tunnels that don't exist in the real world. What does that sound like to you guys? Kind of like the good old Dreadnought. Now they completely redesigned the director. So it says here, the director has been redesigned to provide an intuitive guide to meaningful content flashing destinations when things are happening and less focused on milestones. Now it looks like the Vanguard, Crucible and Gambit tabs are gonna be at the bottom of the screen. Remember, Gambit is a separate activity from the Crucible and Vanguard. Now all of those activities, as well as the Flashpoint, they're gonna refresh every four days, but the raid, that's still gonna be on a weekly seven day reset. Now we also have a teaser at one of the new strikes. So we're getting three strikes overall, but four if you're on PlayStation. So it says one of the new strikes goes through the prison of elders to dodge trains and fight on an old battlefield only familiar to original destiny players now what do you think that one's going to be the only one that i could think of that has trains in it was good old last exit over on venus let me know which map you think it's going to be in the comment section now good old varix from destiny one he's going to be involved in this dlc somehow or another the only thing they say here is that they want to tell a story about where varix has been now, I don't believe Varix is going to be an NPC of some sort because in the all the file, well, all the files that I've gotten from uh, Activision, the NPC folder, well, it had Petrovenge, it had the Spider, it had all these other characters, but not Varix. So it wouldn't surprise me if Varix is somewhat in the game as kind of like a, maybe he'll lead us on some adventures or maybe he's part of some extra stories or quests, but I don't think he's gonna be an NPC. So that is going to do it for this video, guys. Leave me a hashtag made it to the end if you did make it to the end. And I should see you live later on. I'll be streaming the This Week at Bungie like I always do. Hopefully it'll hit around 5, 6 p.m. Eastern and I'll be streaming it right here live on YouTube. That's it, guys. Do me a favor. Drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on the Twitter at MesaShawn. Check out my stream usually and always on YouTube. And that is it. I am out of here like Vladimir. And also a big shout out to Blessius. I'm going to link his channel in the description. We shared footage when we went to play and capture Gambit over at E3. So check them out, link in the description. See you guys.